Hey everybody, today I have a UU match for you as you can see in front of you and today it is with my UU team that I have uh, used in the past but haven't used in a little while um, but as you can see there are a couple of changes that will be made to it um, as you can see there is the Kabutops and the Rotom Heat there instead of the Darmanitan and the Swamper and that's basically because um, I actually can't remember why I did it now um, I know I wanted a spinner at some point and yeah, it kind of developed into this, because I was getting kind of bored of Swampert, and uh, Dalmanitan was kind of annoying, and I decided, why not put a Rotom Heat there, which isn't Scarfed, actually, but it's still a cool poke, I've decided. I quite like it. And also, I've got a Spinner on this team, and a Stealth Rock as well, so, yeah, that's always fun. But anyway, I'm just going to uh, get straight into the match. I sped this part up, because basically this Whimsicott was kind of annoying to get rid of at the beginning. Um, I just decided to do some vault, vault turning on it. Jesus Christ, the past three videos, all you've seen is me vault turning, but that's pretty much the best way to counter this uh, Whimsicott that I have, because obviously if he... Um, if I go for overheat with my Rotom, I'll just be at minus two and I will not be able to break his sub, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, I'm just going to keep going uh, for Volt, uh, Volt Switch and U-Turn because obviously U-Turn is super effective, so I'll be able to break one of his subs fairly easily. But um, he brings in this Miss Mage just now, and uh, this thing was kind of weird because I thought it would be some sort of setup thing because a lot of them are. So I just decided, right, I'll just go into Porygon 2. Porygon 2 can take any hit from any Miss Mages, as I already know. Uh, it can take a plus two hidden power fighting with like over half but it's the side it actually turns out it has the trick so that's kind of annoying because I um, my Porygon 2 is now pretty much useless um, for this Miss Magus well for pretty much anything it can't really do anything anymore because its defenses are pretty much lowered so yeah I just had to go for Ice Beam and obviously now I'm locked into that because I do have the Choice Scarf so I'm just gonna have to keep going for Ice Beams and trying to take this thing out but now the fact that he went for will o -Wisp, I thought, right, he's not going to want his Mr. Mage just to die yet, right? So I decided to go into my Rotom to take uh, to, uh, like, take on whatever he brought in, but he turns out to stay in. He turns out he has double status, and I was like, oh, seriously, Thunder Wave and will o -Wisp? Who the hell runs that? But yeah, that happened, so basically my Rotom is paralyzed now, but his Mr. Mage is his dig, so I Volt Switch out on that. And now I can go into Mianxiao and fake out U-turn whatever wants to come in, except for this, because this Ambipom is obviously going to be faster than me, and I'm pretty sure it's going to want to go for fake out. So I switch out into my Kabutops, because Kabutops can take can take on Ambipoms easily, because Ambipom can't do shit. And basically this is the best time I have to set up my rocks, because I know he won't be able to do anything, he'll either switch out or U-turn out, as we're we'll about to see, he does U-turn out, so that's fine, because I can just go straight for the Stealth Rocks and those rocks are up there and it's going to hurt uh, a few members of his team so that's always nice he goes back into his whimsical and uh, once again this thing is an annoying piece of shit so I'm going to be forced to or yeah I guess I'm going to be forced to switch and I'm going to go out into something I believe I go into my uh, into my Mian Shell. Maybe you're going to Rotom, I'm not really sure. We'll find out in a second. Uh, yeah, I do go into Mian Shell, because that's pretty much the best switch for me, because I can just U-turn, break a sub, and then uh, do whatever, but he goes for Leech Seal, I guess, predicting that, but it really doesn't matter, because he um, will get hurt by U-turn, or his sub will get broken, or and his Leech Seal will just go away, so yeah, it doesn't really matter, to be honest, not really a big deal, but I think he switches out, I can't really, yeah, he, do, he does switch out, and he goes into his Togekiss, as I just go straight for the U-turn, um, and yeah, so that basically means I have the initiative on this thing once again. Well, on him once again. So yeah, that's uh, the good thing about Volt Turning. It just gives you initiative all the time. Gets some real good offensive momentum going. So that's why I like it. But I decided to go into Rotom because I thought this thing probably won't be able to hit me that hard. Like, it might have Air Slash or something, but I can probably live a few of them because I do have leftovers. Um, but he turns out to go for the Roost, so it basically means he's a defensive variant, so this Volt Switch will not be doing anything, because obviously his Flying type is, n is nullified because he's Roosting, he's like landed on the ground kind of thing, so yeah, well that's how the game explains it anyway. But that means I switch out, so I'm going to go into Nidoking, so I'm pretty sure Nidoking can outspeed and do shit tons of damage to this Togekiss, just because it's a Nidoking, uh, Sheer Force, Life Orb, Modest, super effective Ice Beam or Thunderbolt isn't exactly going to tickle, so as you can see that Ice Beam does loads and his Roost is not going to be able to get him up to quite the amount he was at before, so basically it means I'm going to win this battle of stalling, roosting, Ice Beaming, Thunderbolting shenanigans, so yeah, he knows that, so he's going to decide to switch and he goes into his Typhlosion. In hindsight, I really should have predicted that and just gone for a Thunderbolt, but I don't know, I guess I was being stupid, but yeah, anyway, I go for Ice Beam, because this, is, this Ice Beam does a lot of damage anyway, so it doesn't really matter, because it's Typhlosion. Now, it pretty much can't go for Eruption, so now I can go into Kabutops, expecting the Fire move, and tank this Fire Blast like an absolute monster, 
Um, and yeah, go for Stone Edge and kill this Typhlosion in a second. He's going to miss his second Fire Blast. Really didn't matter because you saw because I don't think Kabutops does anything else like in the rest of this game. So yeah, really didn't matter because it wouldn't have killed. So yeah, that uh, that Stone Edge kill. I went for Stone Edge there in case he wanted to predict my Waterform going to his Whimsicott, and I thought Stone Edge would do a decent amount to it, but turns out he let, just leaves it into die, so that's fine. Now he goes for his Whimsicott, and I thought he would just want to go for subs, so I decided to stay in just go for Stone Edge, but he just goes straight for Giga Drain, making the more offensive play and just killing me off straight there and then so that sucks but I didn't really need Kabutops that much anyway like yeah I didn't really need Kabutops that much so yeah but I decided to go into um, this guy because I know Giga Drain won't do that much because he's probably invested in HP more than anything else so I can just go straight for Ice Beam and just destroy something he goes into a Zambipom I guess hoping to take an Ice Beam a bit better than he does but he just dies outright because nothing really likes to switch into a Nidoking even if it, it's a neutral move it still does absolute damage to everything so yeah um, he goes into this Crobat and I just decided well, I don't want to take a Brave Bird, so it's probably best to switch out into Rotom because I can Volt Switch out on this thing. But he goes for the Roost, taking advantage of my Switch. Um, so that's kind of annoying because now he's back at full, even though he wasn't exactly like really low down before, but it's fine. Um, I thought he would want to switch out against me, so I went for the Will O Wisp predicting that, but it turns out he doesn't and just goes for the Super Fang. That's really fine because Super Fang isn't really too bad because he hasn't got rocks up or anything so it's not like this Rotom is going to get hurt overly on the switch and it's paralyzed anyway so it's kind of crippled. Um, I just decided to go for Volt Switch here just to get some solid damage off on this uh, Crobat and get the initiative on him once again and bring in something that can probably kill. So yeah, uh, now he's at a really low amount of HP along with the burn that he's really going to rack up. Even though he does have Black Sludge, it is going to rack up. He's going to be a very low amount after this burn damage right here. Um, so that means I brought in my Mien Shell now just to go for the Fake Out because I knew from this range Fake Out would kill. I know he does have the Infocus ability but I knew Fake Out from that range would kill without a shadow of a doubt. So that does kill as I uh, guessed correctly, well not guessed, as I knew my psychic powers told me. Um, and as I decided to go for the U-turn on this, when Scott, the fact he doesn't go first tells me he's going to go for Giga Drain because Giga Drain is pretty much the only attack he moves these things ever, ever carry. So I decided to go into Porygon, because Porygon can take neutral special hits all day, even without the Eevee Light, it can take this, it takes this, um, Giga Drain like, it's absolutely nothing, which it pretty much is. Look, that does shit damage. Imagine if that had the Eevee Light, it would have literally done nothing. Like, Porygon would have just laughed, and it, it's a duck, it, I can't, you can't laugh, but it would have laughed. But yeah, um, I know he's not really going to be able to do anything, so I decided why not just go for the Ice Beam, because... Best case scenario, I kill his Whimsicott. Worst case scenario, I hit something else hard on the Switch. So I do actually manage to kill that Whimsicott, so that's really nice. My uh, Choice Scarf Porygon 2 is actually like not failing. So, yeah. But he goes into his Togekiss, and I just decided go for the Ice Beam, see how much it does, and hopefully have him kill me. But he know he kind of th sees through my ploy and just decides to roost up and uh, get loads of like HP back with the Leech Seed and his leftovers and his roost. So he's actually at a better range when, uh, from... Like before, I thought the Ice Beam would want to do more, but it doesn't, so yeah. Um, so I decided to go into my Rotom because, well, it's Death Fodder really, because it's pretty much useless at this point, and I just want to free switch into Mien Shell because Mien Shell um, at this station just go fake out and high jump kick and hopefully KO this thing um, if all goes to plan. So yeah, that's what I thought, that's what I was planning to happen. So Rotom dies, not a problem at all, that's what I wanted because now I can go into Mien Shell, go for a fake out, do a little bit of damage just. Try and get as much damage as I can before I go for the high jump kick, just uh, to guarantee the Oko. Um, and I go for the high jump kick here, bang! Does not kill. I was shocked by that, I honestly thought that would kill because I am life orb and everything, but he does live, which is pretty impressive, not gonna lie, but he kills me off, but it does not matter because I can just go to Nido King, who can easily outspeed this Togekiss, and just go for the Thunderbolt and easily kill it off. So that was the end of the game. I thought that was a pretty okay game. This is a game I had a little while ago, actually. Uh, but, yeah, it was still pretty cool. It was um, to test out my kind of newish like guys on this team. So, yeah, that's a thing. So, hope you guys enjoyed. And, yeah, I will see you all next time, I guess. Yeah, thank you very much. See you later.